Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Anatomy by Dr. Vijaya. In this video, I will be covering the development of placenta and I will be uh, touching the concepts of multiple pregnancies. So let's begin with the development of placenta and utero-placental circulation. A quick review on the first week of embryonic development. So in this picture, you can see the ovulation which has occurred. So the oocyte which has been expelled from the ovary. So that happens during ovulation. So and it's picked up by the fimbria of the uterine tube. So here you are seeing the stage one that is the fertilization which occurs within the uterine tube. Uh, especially at the ampulla of the uterine tube so 12 to 24 hours after ovulation so the fertilization occurs okay and once the fertilization occurs the product of fertilization will be called as zygote and this zygote slowly undergoes mitotic division so initially it will be a two cell stage okay so there will be a cleavage the first cleavage which will be completed around 30 hours after fertilization so the product of this mitotic division, so that will be called as blastomeres. So this mitotic division will go on and a stage comes which is after three to four days after fertilization where there will be formation of 12 to 16 uh, uh, blastomeres or uh, it can be more than 16 to 32 as well. Okay, so there will be formation of many blastomeres and it looks like a uh, morula so this stage is called has like mulberry okay uh, so that's why it's called has the morula stage okay and uh, the division goes on and by by around four to five days after fertilization so the developing zygote enters the uterine cavity so once it enters the uterine cavity, the fluid within the uterine cavity enters the, uh, uh, the zygote, okay. So there will be separation of these blastomeres, okay. So there will be formation of outer cell mass and inner cell mass, okay. So outer cell mass will be called as trophoblast and inner cell mass will be called as embryoblast. So this outer cell mass that is, which is called as trophoblast mainly helps in invading uh, the uterine the endometrium of the uterus okay so that process is called as implantation which occurs around six days after fertilization okay so this trophoblast later develops into uh, placenta and inner cell mass which is called as embryoblast will form the proper embryo okay so this is a quick review of the uh, first week of embryonic development so you can go through uh, this in detail in my uh, videos uh, the embryo the general embryology videos that is i have the videos on first second and third week of embryonic development okay in this picture you are seeing the outer cell mass which is called as trophoblast and the inner cell mass so this is the em developing embryo the proper embryo which is called as embryoblast so this stage is called as blastocyst stage by this stage the embryo has reached the uterine cavity and it is in the process of implantation so as i mentioned earlier the outer cell mass the trophoblast mainly helps in the process of implantation so here in this picture the second picture you are seeing the trophoblast is invading the uterine epithelium okay here you can see the stroma that is the endometrium of the uterus so you know that uh, uterus has three layers perimetrium then the muscle layer called as myometrium and the innermost layer will be called as endometrium which has the uterine glands and uh, blood vessels okay so the part of the uh, uterine endometrium which, where, the, where the implantation of the embryo takes place. So that stroma will be called as decidua. Okay. Uh, so here the trophoblast which later forms a placenta. So they start invading the uterine epithelium. 
So by the end of first week, at the beginning of second week, so the trophoblasts, they divide into two layers. Okay, so one having a distinct uh, cell membrane with the round nucleus. Okay, so uh, that layer will be called as cytotrophoblast. Then the second layer, which loses its cell membrane because this mainly help in invading the uterine endometrium during implantation. So that layer will be called as syncytiotrophoblast. Okay, so here in this picture, you can see the purple one without the cell membrane. Okay, so that layer is called a syncytiotrophoblast, the one which is forming a boundary between the syncytio and the inner cell mass. So that is called as a cytotrophoblast, which has a distinct cell membrane. Okay. So along with that, inner cell mass also undergoes division. That is the embryoblast. There will be formation of two layers, which you can remember. Uh, that is, uh, there will be formation of hypoblast and epiblast, and later further, there will be formation of germ layers. Okay. So for that, you can check my uh, general embryology videos for the uh, embryonic development. So here we'll be focusing on the development of placenta. Okay, so the syncytiotrophoblast mainly helps in invading. Okay, so uh, the syncytiotrophoblast doesn't have the uh, mitotic uh, property. Okay, so they don't undergo division. Uh, so the cells are uh, replenished by the cytotrophoblast. So the uh, cells to the syncytio are mainly contributed by the cytotrophoblast which has the capacity to undergo division. But since issue doesn't lose, they lose their capacity. So their main purpose is to invade the uterine endometrium. Okay, so the cells are replenished by the uh, cytotrophoblast. So as I mentioned earlier, after the implantation of the embryo, the uterine endometrium will be called as decidua. Okay, so there will be three types of decidua. Uh, so it decidua mainly refers to the gravid endometrium because the endometrium will be at the secretory stage okay so there are uh, different phases of uh, uterine cycle okay so there is ovarian cycle and uterine cycle so uh, the uterine cycle includes menstrual phase then proliferative phase and secretory phase okay so in the secretory phase the blood vessels will be well developed in the endometrium and they become coiled and even the uterine glands are more in number when they are well developed okay because they are uh, in the preparation of implantation okay so they are in the stage of uh, if the fertilization occurs so there will be implantation so they have to nourish the developing embryo so this uh, the endometrium will be in the secretory uh, stage which is under the influence of uh, the progesterone the hormone okay so initially the progesterone uh, hormone is mainly released by the corpus luteum so you know what is corpus luteum that once uh, there is expel of the oocyte okay so there will be a graphene mature follicular stage so during ovulation so that graphene follicle which has been matured so uh, the oocyte from that mature follicle expels out and the remaining cells will form the corpus luteum and this corpus luteum mainly uh, secretes progesterone which is very much necessary for the secretory stage of the uh, uterus okay so there will be further development of or form uh, there'll be rich blood vessels which are coiled and there'll be formation of more and more uterine glands okay so initially the progesterone is mainly secreted by the uh, corpus luteum but once there is full complete development of placenta so the placenta will take over the uh, uh, the secretion of a progesterone and the corpus luteum will degenerate okay uh, this we will be talking further as we go to the development of placenta and the main functions of the placenta okay so uh, now the gravid uh, endometrium is under the influence of progesterone which is progesterone is very much necessary for maintaining the pregnancy because the endometrium should be in the secretory phase so that the implantation can occur and the, uh, the glands and the blood vessels the blood in the uh, uterus can nourish the developing embryo 
okay so the hormone progesterone plays a very important role in maintaining the pregnancy okay so this endometrium will be called as a gravid endometrium okay and mainly the functional layer of the endometrium is involved okay so there are uh, uh, different layer uh, in this as well okay in the endometrium as well <clears throat> So the decidua, there are three regions of the decidua in relation to, uh, to the implantation site. Okay, so in relation to the implantation site, so the gravid, the gravid endometrium or the decidua is divided into three regions. Okay, so decidua basalis, decidua capsularis, and decidua parietalis. Okay, decidua basalis is that part of the decidua where the embryo and its membranes are deep to this uh, layer okay so this mainly contributes to the formation of maternal part of the placenta okay so pla placenta once it develops it has a maternal side and the fetal side okay so this layer of endometrium it is mainly mainly it occupies the part of the developing embryo and its membrane are present deep to this uh, layer and this mainly forms the maternal part of the placenta which nourishes the developing embryo the one which forms a cap okay so which surrounds around the uh, developing the overlying uh, concept is so which forms a superficial part of the decidua so that is called a decidua capsularis and the remaining part will be called as decidua parietalis okay <clears throat> so in this picture you can see the three regions of decidua so this is the developing embryo okay and it has been uh, implanted uh, completely the implantation has taken place so the area of the decidua where the developing embryo is deep to that the, the developing embryo and the membrane are deep to this layer so this decidua will be called as decidua basalis so this will further develop along with the development of embryo to form the maternal part of the placenta okay this is a uterine cavity okay so this is when the trans uh, when you take a transverse section uh, exactly at the anterior or the posterior wall where usually the implantation takes place at the anterior or the posterior wall of the body of the uterus okay so if you can remember the parts of the uterus it has a uh, the tubes are on either side it has a fundus then a body then it forms the cervix at the lower part okay so here you can see this is the fundus this is the body and this is the cervix so these are the parts of the uterus okay so the implantation normally takes place at the anterior or the posterior wall of the body of the uterus okay so here the you can see this is the developing uh, fetus okay and here you can see there is complete development of placenta so this light purplish color so this is the decidua basalis so which forms a maternal part of the placenta okay so this further develops and that forms a placenta so the one which is here which forms a cap okay this is a very thin layer okay so this is decidua capsularis and the remaining decidua which is on this is the uterine cavity so all these the remaining one will be called as decidua parietalis okay so these are the three main region so among these three region so basalis is the one which contributes for the development of placenta <clears throat> so let's move on to the uteroplacental circulation so as i mentioned earlier trophoblast will be having two layers so one will be invading the endometrium okay that uh, layer is called a syncytial trophoblast the other one forms the boundary and they undergo division and they help in replacing the cells of the syncytial trophoblast so those are called as cytotrophoblast okay so syncytial trophoblast within that layer there will be formation of small lumens okay the vacuoles appear so that stage is called this is around at the day nine okay after fertilization okay so at this the lacunar stage the vacuoles appear in the syncytial trophoblast okay and these lacunae these are small okay and they uh, fuse to form the larger one so this stage is called as a lacunar stage then during that is around day 11 and 12 so these spaces 
they form a network okay so they communicate with the uh, neighboring one and they form an intercommunicating network okay and as it goes on the cells of the syncytial trophoblast they go deeper and deeper into the uterine stroma, stroma and they erode the endothelial lining of the maternal capillaries so uh, the endometrium is the secretory phase okay and there are lots of blood vessels in the endometrium okay so mainly it is the functional layer okay there is <coughs> uh, where the the embryo is uh, invading that is mainly the syncytiotroph of blast is invading so as they invade they will be eroding the uh, endothelial lining of the maternal capillaries so this happens during day 11 and 12 so in the during same time so what happens once the capillaries the maternal capillaries are eroded okay so they form sinusoids okay and they are continuous with the syncytial lacunae so these maternal capillaries they come in contact with the lacunae which are developed in the uh, syncytial trophoblast and slowly the blood from the maternal capillaries enters the lacunar system okay which is established in the syncytial trophoblast okay so sinusoids means they don't have a definite uh, so they have gaps uh, the blood capillaries having a uh, gap so that there will be exchange of uh, nutrients okay so these capillaries they become continuous and they form the blood will enter the lacunar system and this is how the uteroplacental circulation takes place so this is in the initial stage okay <clears throat> so here you can see in the picture so the green one the dark green one represents the syncytiotrophoblast which is eroding the stroma of the uterine endometrium so this light green represents the cytotrophoblast having a definitive or a distinct cell membrane okay and this is the developing embryo the embryo blast which is divided into epiblast and hypoblast the blue one is epiblast the yellow one is the hypoblast okay so this is the cavity so slowly these are invading and you can see the blood vessels within the decidua okay so in the endometrium the gravid endometrium of the uterus <coughs> so during day nine there will be formation of lacunae within the syncytiotrophoblast and they initially it will be a small lacunae they join to form a larger one and they have a network okay so there will be intercommunicating uh, network okay and uh, you can see this is a cytotrophoblast so as they invade they erode the maternal blood capillaries so these are called as the maternal sinusoids okay and there will be communication with the lacunar system so this is the lacunae within the syncytial trophoblast and this is the maternal sinus sinusoids so the blood easily oozes into the lacunar system which has been developed in the uh, syncytial trophoblast so initially the uteroplacental circulation takes place like this there is one more uh, structure which has developed over here okay so which was not in the earlier picture you can see here so this was the dark green was the syncytiotrophoblast. The light green is a cytotrophoblast. So there is development of one more membrane outside the developing embry uh, embryo. The embryo. So this is the embryo. Okay. So outside that, can you uh, if you can see here, it is light orange in color. Okay. So that that is called has the extra. So this is the cavity initially there will be a membrane here which is called as extra embryonic membrane okay so this is called as extra embryonic membrane so there will be formation of a mesoderm outside the embryo so that's why it is named as extra embryonic mesoderm okay because there is one more membrane formation here within the embryo that's called as intra embryonic mesoderm if you can remember the process of gastrulation how epiblast will convert the two plate two layered embryonic plate into three germ layers okay ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so that mesoderm which is developing within the embryo so that's called as intra embryonic mesoderm okay so here this is the mesenchyme cells the mesoderm 
formed outside the embryo so that's why it is called as extra embryonic mesoderm so initially it's a mesenchymal cells again there will be formation of small cavities within this extra embryonic mesoderm and these cavity again it's called as since it is outside the embryo it's called as extra embryonic cavity which divides the extra embryonic mesoderm into two layers so this is called as the splanchnopleuric layer and this is called as a somatopleuric layer okay so i will repeat so outside the embryo that is between the cytotrophoblast and the developing embryo there will be formation of a mesoderm uh, having a mesenchymal cells so those are called as extra embryonic mesoderm and within the extra embryonic mesoderm there will be formation of small cavities so these cavities will join together to form one big cavity called as extra embryonic cavity okay so once these cavities are formed it divides the extra embryonic mesoderm into two layers so one layer is near to the cytotrophoblast on the inner aspect of the cytotrophoblast so that's called a somatopleuric okay the other one is near to the developing embryo so that's called as the splanchnopleuric uh, mesoderm so extra embryonic splanchnopleuric mesoderm and this is called as extra embryonic somatopleuric mesoderm okay so when you see this cavity so this is developed throughout the extra embryonic mesoderm but only at one end okay that's mainly at the caudal end of the embryo so that forms a connecting stalk okay so later develops into the umbilical cord so this is called as the connecting stalk okay so the connection between the embryo and the developing uh, placenta okay so this area will be called as a connecting stalk <coughs> So here you can see the cavity has joined together and they have become one big cavity so this is the extra embryonic cavity okay <clears throat> and here you can see the connecting stalk here you can see the extra embryonic somatopleuric membrane okay and this is called as the extra embryonic splanchnopleuric membrane okay so this formation of membrane is very very important because within this membrane there will be formation of fetal capillaries okay so there should be exchange of nutrients it's not only the nourishment which it gets from the maternal capillaries also the unwanted uh, material should be expelled out from the developing embryo or the developing fetus okay so that can be done by the form by the development of fetal capillaries okay so this extra embryonic mesoderm mainly contributes in the formation of fetal capillaries okay <clears throat> and you, here you can see how the network has formed and this leads to the utroplacental circulation so next so once these uh, extra embryonic mesoderm are formed and initial utroplacental circulation has occurred so slowly there will be formation of a finger like projection okay so the developing part that uh, the cytotrophoblast and the somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm so that part will be called as the chorion or the chorionic plate okay so later it will be, it will be called as chorion or the chorionic plate so there there will be formation of finger like projection called as chorionic villi okay so these are nothing but small finger like processes which are essential functional elements of the placenta the developing placenta okay so this villi are surrounded by maternal blood okay so there will be one villi chorionic villi so that will be surrounded by the maternal blood okay uh, and the fetal capillaries are formed in the substance of the villi so here in the villi within the substance of the villi which mainly has a cytotrophoblast and extra embryonic mesoderm so within that extra embryonic mesoderm there will be development of fetal capillaries okay so they are formed in the substance of the villi and surrounding the villi will be the maternal blood so the exchanges between the maternal and the fetal circulation will take will take place through the tissues forming the walls of the villi okay so the villi are first formed all over the trophoblast okay so when you see so wherever the uh, trophoblast the cytotrophoblast are there and wherever the extra embryonic mesoderm are present so they are present throughout 
the trophoblast okay and it uh, grows into the surrounding decidua but later as the development further uh, goes on so they are mainly related to the decidua base halis where exactly the uh, there is a close contact with the developing embryo so the rest of the area of the trophoblast so that will degenerate so only the area where the embryo is in contact uh, with the stroma so that is the decidua base halis so only there will be further development of these chorionic villi <clears throat> so here you can see here throughout there will be formation of the chorionic villi okay so this model is showing a developing embryo this is the yolk sac okay the connecting stalks so within that you will be seeing the allantois which later forms the uracus okay <clears throat> so this is the connecting stalk and here you can see the development of chorionic villi so as i mentioned chorionic plate is nothing but the extra embryonic mesoderm along with cytotrophoblast so those structure will be called as chorion and these finger like projections are present throughout this is the amniotic cavity okay but as further uh, development takes place so the, the chorionic villi will be well developed only in the area of decidua basalis where it is in close contact with the embryo okay so the rest of the area will degenerate okay so only at this area you will be seeing the uh, the well developed villi okay the fetal chorionic villi <clears throat> and here you can see the proper uh, circulation going on so this is the connecting stalk as i mentioned which later forms the umbilical cord okay and this is the allantois okay so small out pocketing from the uh, caudal end of the that is a cloaca of the embryo so that forms allantois okay and this is the umbilical cord and this is the developing the developed placenta okay So the formation of chorionic villi again has different stages. So there are three main stages in the formation of chorionic villi. The first stage is the primary villi. Okay, so here what happens? You are seeing this pink one. So dark pink one represents the syncytiotrophoblast. Sorry, uh, the pink represents the decidua, that is the uterine endometrium. The light green one, without the cell boundary. Will be called will be the syncytiotrophoblast and this is the cytotrophoblast. Okay, so this is a primary villi stage where it consists of central core of cytotrophoblast covered by syncytiotrophoblast, this light green color one. Okay, uh, adjoining villi are separated by the intervillous spaces. So the intervillous space is mainly formed by the uterine endometrium. Okay, that is the which has the maternal capillaries, the maternal sinusoids, the maternal blood. So, as I mentioned, the villi will be surrounded by the maternal blood. Okay. So, this is the primary villi. The secondary villi shows three layers. So, when there is development of extra embryonic mesoderm. Okay. So, that also forms a part of the chorionic villi. So, you will be seeing three layers. Outer syncytiotrophoblast. So, this light green color one. Okay. Then, middle layer you see the cytotrophoblast okay and this one is the extra embryonic mesoderm so that is the inner layer okay so primary layer villi has two layers syncytiotrophoblast cytotrophoblast okay and adjoining between the villi you see the intervillous space secondary villa has three layers outermost is syncytiotrophoblast then cytotrophoblast then extra embryonic Mesoderm. Tertiary villi again it is same three uh, layers that is outer syncytiotrophoblast, then um, middle cytotrophoblast, and innermost is extra embryonic mesoderm. Along with that, there will be blood capillaries, the fetal capillaries in the mesoderm. So that stage is called as tertiary villi stage. So, tertiary villi are like secondary villi except that there are blood capillaries in the mesoderm. Okay, so these are the three stages of formation of chorionic villi. <laughs> so, the picture shows the three stages here. The same thing here. So, this is the syncytiotrophoblast because no cell boundary. Here you can see cytotrophoblast. So, primary villi stage. 
so slowly there will be development of extra embryonic mesoderm here okay so this is a secondary villi stage so you can see the maternal blood vessels pouring the blood into the villi here and here surrounded by the maternal blood the villi are surrounded by the maternal blood so that this in between the villi you will be seeing the intervillous space tertiary villi stage is the same three layers but there will be presence of fetal capillaries the blood capillaries so there will be development of fetal capillaries and this layer will be the decidua basalis which is a part of the uh, uterine endometrium okay so you can see the all the layers of the chorion which includes syncytiotrophoblast cytotrophoblast extra embryonic mesoderm so this plate forms a chorionic plate okay so this part is called as a villus chorion the one which is having the villi with the intervillous space will be called as villus chorion and this part will be called as the decidua basalis so these are the parts of the placenta so in this picture you are seeing the secondary villi stage okay because you are seeing the three layers the dark green one represents a syncytio light green represents a cytotrophoblast and this one is the extra embryonic mesoderm okay so the maternal capillaries are pouring the blood in the intervillous space so here you can see the uh, development of tertiary villi okay so you can see the development of small capillaries within the extra embryonic mesoderm okay <clears throat> along with the three layers so this villi will be the definitive villi of the tertiary villi okay and uh, these capillaries in the tertiary villi will slowly uh, make contact with the capillaries or the blood vessels which are developing in the connecting stalk okay so initially this will the connecting stalk uh, is the one which connects the developing embryo with the uh, developing placenta so there will be development of blood vessels within the connecting stalk the mesoderm present in the connecting stalk so once there is formation of blood vessels here the connecting stalk will be called as the umbilical cord so all the vessels in the villi tertiary villi will slowly have contact with the chorionic plate okay the capillaries present in the chorionic plate so chorionic plate includes the extra embryonic mesoderm and the cytotrophoblast okay so slowly they have contact with the blood capillaries present in the chorionic plate and in turn they have contact with the uh, blood vessels developing in the connecting stalk okay so this will have uh, communication with the blood vessels which are developing in the intra embryonic mesoderm okay uh, uh, which is developing within the embryo okay so that uh, makes the uh, placental uh, circulation that, that is there is exchange of nutrients and gases from the placenta uh, to the developing embryo the developing fetus so as the development goes on so all these capillaries have contact with the uh, the blood vessels developing in the connecting stalks and in turn they have connection with the blood vessels which have which are developed in the intraembryonic mesoderm so there is a uh, <coughs> network created between the maternal uh, uh, part of the placenta with the fetal uh, part okay and in this picture you can see there will be further uh, development in the uh, placenta so this is the villi so this villi will be called as the anchoring villi or the stem villi so uh, the villi which extends from the chorionic plate so this is the chorionic plate having the extra embryonic mesoderm and the cytotrophoblast so the villi which extends from the uh, the chorionic plate till the uh, the uh, endo metrium okay so that part will be called has the anchoring villi or the stem villi but uh, from the stem villi there will be development of some branches so that will be called as free villi okay so this is the one where we will have a direct contact with the maternal blood which is uh, uh, pouring into the intervillous space so this is the intervillous space where all the maternal uh, blood will pour into that okay and these free villi 
okay uh, the branching one will have direct contact with the maternal blood and there will be exchange of nutrients and gases okay <clears throat> and this is the anchoring villi or the stem villi so further changes what occurs is the the, the changes in the cytotrophoblast and there will be formation of outer cytoplast cytotrophoblast shell okay so here you can see from the villi from the stem or the anchoring villi the cytotrophoblast they start penetrating so they progress in penetrating until they reach the uh, endometrium okay so they penetrate from the villi they pass through the syncytiotrophoblast and uh, they penetrate uh, until they reach the uh, uterine endometrium so once they reach there they form connection with the neighboring uh, uh, penetrating uh, cytotrophoblast so this is one villi so you are seeing here the cytotrophoblast are penetrating okay this is the other villi here also you are seeing the penetration of the cytotrophoblast so once they come and reach the uh, uterine endometrium they form contact with the uh, neighboring uh, cytotrophoblast and they form a thick shell forming outer cytotrophoblast shell okay so this develops throughout the trophoblast and uh, it helps in um, attaching the chorionic sac okay so chorionic sac firmly with the endometrium so this mainly helps in uh, firm attachment between the endometrium and the uh, chorionic sac so this shell is important in firm attachment so this is called as the outer cytotrophoblast shell okay so here you can see the connecting stalks the blood vessels are developed okay and this is the chorionic uh, plate having extra embryonic mesoderm and the cytotrophoblast this is the anchoring villi or the stem villi and these are the branching okay which are called as free villi and here you can see the penetration of the cytotrophoblast to form the outer cytotrophoblast shell okay and this is the intervillous space where you see the maternal blood so along with the tissues of the decidua basalis uh, that is the uh, the endometrium which is in contact with the embryonic side the embryonic pole so along with that tissue and the villi so that forms a disc shaped mass called the placenta then the blood vessels within the villi uh, will have will be connected to the vessels in the connecting stalk so there that is the vessels which are developed in this connecting stalk so those are umbilical vessels so once there is development of blood vessels over uh, in the connecting stalk so that structure will be called as umbilical cord so you will be seeing uh, two umbilical arteries and umbilical one umbilical vein so here you you, you can see a uh, <clears throat> uh, one umbilical vein and two umbilical arteries here so here the umbilical arteries are represented blue because uh, this carries a deoxygenated uh, blood from the fetus towards the uh, maternal sides okay so it carries the deoxygenated blood from the fe uh, fetal side and passes to the maternal uh, side so it goes to the maternal veins and the oxygenated blood from the maternal arteries so that will pour into the intervillous space okay and uh, there will be exchange between the capillaries which are fetal capillaries which are present in the uh, free villi and that will have connection with the uh, anchoring villi and this will have contact with the umbilical vein within the umbilical cord then the maternal blood circulates that uh, the circulates through the intervillous space and from there it comes to the umbilical vein and from umbilical vein has a contact with the blood vessels which have been developed in the intraembryonic mesoderm <clears throat> so this is how the connection develops and this is how the placenta helps in exchange of nutrients and uh, yeah, and there is also gaseous exchange as well so this is the fully formed uh, placenta so this is the maternal side so the maternal side of the placenta is uh, subdivided into number of lobes by uh, develop uh, due to the development of a septa okay so you can see from the maternal aspect a layer of connective tissue develops so that's called as a septa which uh, grows into the intervillous space okay so this subdivide the maternal subdivides the maternal side of the placenta into number of lobes 
okay and that will be called as cotyledon okay so this is the one uh, cotyledon having uh, one anchoring villi with their branches okay and uh, uh, on either side you are seeing the septa with the intervillous space okay so this is the septa which is growing into the intervillous uh, space from the maternal side okay so each lobe of the placenta is called as the maternal cotyledon okay so that uh, so wherever uh, usually due to the formation of these cotyledon so the maternal side of the placenta will be rough and the fetal side will be connected to the umbilical cord and it will be smooth so that will help you to once the uh, placenta is expelled out after the delivery okay so you can uh, make out which is the maternal side and which is which is the fetal side so maternal side will be rough with the uh, different lobes those are cotyledons and the fetal side will be connected to the umbilical cord and they they'll be smooth okay <coughs> so the placental surface so this is the fetal surface the fetal side which is connected to the umbilical cord and you are seeing uh, the surface will be smooth this is the maternal side the maternal surface having cotyledons okay <coughs> and it is covered by decidua uh, basalis so here you can see these are the chorionic vessels which are within the chorionic plate so chorionic plate includes the extra embryonic mesoderm and the cytotrophoblast and also it has a part of syncytiotrophoblast as well so fetal and the maternal surface so this is the picture of a real placenta so you can see these are the lobes the cotyledons you can see the grooves so it will be rough and the, this is the maternal surface the other side will be the fetal surface which is smooth and you can see chorionic vessels underneath the amnion okay so amnion uh, membrane looks uh, smoother okay and this is the umbilical cord having the umbilical vessels so this is the cut section of the umbilical cord so you can see here two arteries and one vein so the umbilical cord developed it's apart from the connecting stalk connects the placenta to the fetus so contains two umbilical arteries one umbilical vein so and they are mainly suspended in a gel kind of material which is called as wartens jelly so this picture shows the placental circulation the fully formed uh, the circulation occurring in the fully formed placenta so all the cotyledons so you know what is cotyledon it's a lobe uh, which is separated by the residual septa so all the cotyledons will receive the maternal blood from the spiral arteries okay so the blood from the spiral arteries enter the intervillous space and uh, this is intervillous space is like a lake where the chorionic villi will uh, bathe uh, within the intervillous space so here you can see this is the anchoring villi the stem villi and these are the branching villi or the free villi with which bathes within the intervillous space so there will be pressure changes and there will be exchange of gases and nutrients from the intervillous space the maternal blood which is pouring into the intervillous space so enters the capillaries which are present within these villi okay so from there it enters the chorionic plate the blood vessels present in the chorionic plate and then it has connection with the blood vessel present in the umbilical cord so mainly the oxygenated blood passes through the umbilical vein so here the red one represents the umbilical vein which has con uh, contact with the blood vessels in the intraembryonic mesoderm so mainly it enters the fetal heart okay so whenever the uh, this happens due to pressure changes once the pressure decreases so what happens uh, slowly the blood from the uh, towards the chorionic plate it moves towards the uh, decidua the decidual plate over here so uh, the blood enters the uh, endometrial vein okay so the maternal vein present over here in the decidual space uh, uh, septa so uh, due to the change whenever the pressure decreases so from the chorion from the blood from the chorionic plate uh, they move towards the 
decidual uh, mainly entering the endometrial veins which are present over here so this is how the placental circulation takes place and the exchange of nutrients and uh, 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 the gases takes place so once the placenta is completely formed there will be formation of placental membrane which is also called as the placental barrier uh, so it mainly consists of the tissues uh, the membrane or the barrier consists of tissues which uh, intervene between the fetal blood uh, which are present in the chorionic within the chorionic villi and maternal blood which are pouring into the intervillar space so Following are the layers which forms the placental uh, membrane. Uh, the innermost here you can see the uh, endothelium of fetal blood vessels and its basement membrane. Next you see the extra embryonic mesoderm. Okay, the, this light green color. Then the cytotrophoblast and its basement membrane and syncytiotrophoblast. Okay, so here you can see the maternal blood. So this forms a barrier, the placental barrier, and these are the layers forming the barrier. So as the fetal uh, development progresses, so there will be uh, more demand of uh, nutrients and uh, mainly the oxygen. So what happens? The the barrier becomes thinner. Uh, initially, uh, this is during early week where the barrier is formed by four layers. But as the fetal development goes on by the end of uh, fourth month, okay, so the barrier becomes thinner and there will be only the uh, the endothelium of the fetal uh, blood vessels and the syncytiotrophoblast, so cyto and connective tissue might disappear so that there is. Um, more diffusion of the metabolites and the gases so this occurs as the fetal development progresses further and when they, whenever there is uh, more demand for more metabolites and gases so here you can see so the villous blood, ves uh, blood vessel so you're seeing just the, the the barrier or the membrane has become thinner compared to uh, the earlier weeks Now coming to the functions of placenta. So the main function of placenta is the exchange of metabolites and gases. So it's a site of nutrient and gas and waste exchange. So nutrients and gas, uh, that is gases mainly include the oxygen. So that travels from the maternal side to the fetal uh, capillaries and uh, the carbon dioxide uh, and the waste uh, from the fetal capillaries move on to the uh, endometrial side. So this uh, placenta's main function is exchange of metabolites and uh, gases. Not only that, it also secretes uh, hormones which help in maintaining the pregnancy. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, during early week before the placenta is completely developed, the maintenance of the pregnancy is mainly uh, done by the corpus luteum because for maintenance, uh, progesterone is very much necessary. So progesterone is secreted by the corpus luteum. And once the placenta completely develops, so that function is taken up by the placenta. That means it secretes progesterone to maintain the pregnancy. Along with that, it also secretes uh, estrogen, especially the higher amount at the end of the pregnancy for um, maintenance of the uterus. Uh, 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 the thickness of the uterus and also for the development of uh, uh, mammary gland okay uh, at the uh, earlier weeks uh, the uh, the syncytiotrophoblast mainly secretes a human chorionic gonadotropin which is very much necessary for the uh, maintenance of corpus luteum so that it keeps secreting the progesterone till the placenta completely develops okay so hcg it's mainly uh, secreted by the syncytiotrophoblast hmm. and uh, placenta also forms barrier for harmful substances okay uh, so it uh, forms a thick barrier so that only the necessary metabolites and gases gets exchanged and um, the mainly prevents the uh, for, uh, barrier for the many bacteria and viruses uh, 
placenta also uh, provides maternal antibodies especially igg immunoglobulin uh, igg uh, to the fetus so that uh, gives immunity to the uh, fetus the growing fetus so these are the main functions of placenta and uh, here you can see the harm harmful substances like drugs uh, poisons and carbon monoxide viruses like rubella cytomegalovirus then uh, tox uh, toxoplasma gondii so all these are prevented uh, uh, due to the presence of this uh, placental membrane or the placental barrier now coming to the clinical aspect of uh, placenta so there are two main common placental uh, abnormalities one is placental abruption or abruptio placenta the other one is placenta previa so here you can see three pictures the first picture shows the normal formation of the placenta which is on the upper uh, on the lateral upper lateral aspect over here okay so this is a normal placental development here you can see placental abruption so uh, in this condition there will be early separation of placenta from the inner wall of the uterus before the delivery of the baby okay uh, so usually this will disrupt the oxygen and metabolites which has to be transferred to the fetus so the fetus will be uh, disrupted with the oxygen and uh, uh, essential nutrients so then the mother can have a heavy bleeding uh, due to this okay so this can be fatal to the uh, both mother and fetus the next is uh, placenta previa so where the placenta is seen on the lower part of the uterus so sometimes it uh, uh, covers the cervix partially or completely okay so what happens whenever the cervix starts when once the cervix starts uh, dilating during labor so the placenta starts separating from the wall of the uterus and that, that might get uh, separated and it might get delivered before the uh, delivery of the baby okay so this condition is called as placenta previa so even this can be dangerous to the baby baby because always the placenta has to be separated once there is uh, delivery of the baby but since here the placenta is located at the lower part of the uterus covering the cervix so whenever the cervix dilates especially during the labor so uh, it gets separated from the uterine wall so let us move on on the concepts of multiple pregnancy so the frequency of this multiple pregnancy or multiple gestation uh, for example twins or triplets are becoming more common nowadays in the recent years so the reason being one can be due to the increase in the age of the mothers uh, while giving birth to infants the other reason is use of uh, increased use of fertility treatments which also includes uh, assisted reproductive uh, uh, treatments the art okay so due to these uh, uh, reasons there there is increase in the chances of multiple uh, pregnancy or multiple gestations so more common because of greater access to fertility, uh, fertility therapies and to those being treated for infertility by assisted uh, reproductive technologies so there are two main types of uh, uh, multiple pregnancies one is it can lead to dizygotic twins or fraternal twins the other one is monozygotic or identical twins okay so let us know about each type in detail so fraternal twins or dizygotic twins so these uh, are originated from two separate zygotes so this is very common uh, due to simultaneous uh, shedding of two mature oocytes and uh, the two oocytes are separately fertilized by uh, different spermatozoa so there will be formation of two separate zygotes which implant individually in the uterus and once they get implanted there will be formation of their own placenta amniotic cavity and the chorion sac so each zygote and each embryo will have its own placenta amniotic cavity and the chorionic sac and definitely uh, they might be different in the uh, might or might not be different in the sex okay it depends upon the fertilization okay so they can be uh, both uh, the same both of the same sexes or it can be different as well 
okay so here is the picture you can see here two separate zygotes are formed so they implant separately and separate placenta and chorion uh, it depends if uh, the developing placenta and the chorionic sac are close together so there can be fusion and it might look like one placenta so that's uh, due to uh, due to approximation uh, since the uh, the uh, the embryos which are developing within the uterine cavity can there can be less space so that's why there it can lead to fusion but uh, it can be identified as dizygotic because they will be uh, totally different uh, in appearance okay the so their external appearance will be different their blood group everything doesn't match so that tells you that it can be uh, it is uh, due to dizygotic uh, twinning the next type is monozygotic twins so here uh, the twinning uh, develops from a single fertilized ovum okay so this results from splitting of the zygote so once the zygote is formed the splitting can occur in any uh, stages okay so that leads to monozygotic twins okay so under these there are dif uh, different types okay so the splitting can occur in various stages so one stage is where the splitting can occur once the zygote is is in two cell stage as i mentioned earlier zygote undergoes mitotic division so first there will be formation of two cells okay uh, that is the cleavage division so if the splitting occurs during that stage so definitely they will have separate inner cell mass and outer cell mass and once they start implanting they will have similar uh, uh, features of dizygotic twins that is they have uh, separate placenta separate amniotic cavity and separate chorionic cavity okay since they have uh, undergone splitting at a two cell stage and that's why there will be formation of two blastocyst cavity okay so this might have these features of uh, dizygotic uh, twins okay but this can be identified as monozygotic because they have they resemble they have a higher resemblance in their blood grouping finger uh, uh, printing and uh, uh, even the sex and the external appearance so this will tell that this is due to uh, monozygotic twinning the next uh, uh, splitting can occur during the blastocyst uh, stage okay so here once uh, uh, once the inner and outer cell mass is formed okay so the uh, there can be formation uh, there can be splitting at the blastocyst and there will be two inner cell mass okay so what happens in this if the splitting has occurred at the early blastocyst stage so the uh, twins can have the embryo can have uh, same placenta same chorionic cavity but two amniotic cavity because there will be formation of two inner cell mass okay so the amniotic cavity develops uh, in the inner cell mass but placenta and chorionic cavity from the outer cell mass so since they have one outer cell mass so there will be one placenta one chorionic cavity but two amniotic cavity okay so that tells that the splitting has occurred at early blastocyst stage the later the splitting can also occur the splitting at the bilaminar disc stage once the two laminar that is epiblast and hypoblast is formed if the splitting occurs at during that stage so the uh, developing embryos will have all the cavities all the membranes in common that is they have one placenta one chorionic uh, cavity and one amniotic cavity okay so these are uh, three different stages where the monozygotic twinning can occur okay so stage when zygote splits if it splits during two cell stage so the placenta will be separate chorionic sac will be two amniotic sac will be two if early if the splitting occurs during early blastocyst then single placenta single chorionic cavity but two amniotic cavity because there will be two inner cell mass if the splitting occurs during bilaminar germ disc stage the placenta will be single chorionic cavity single and amniotic cavity is also single okay so these are the different stages if the splitting there are some condition abnormal condition uh, where uh, if 
the splitting occurs at the very later stages of development especially once the primitive node and streak are formed so this re leads to a condition called as conjoint twins okay so it depends upon where the splitting has occurred where if the splitting has occurred um, uh, incompletely so that leads to a condition called as conjoint twins so there are different types depending upon uh, the location where the splitting has occurred so here are the few examples of conjoined twins so here you can see uh, this condition is called as dicephalus so one body with two heads then craniopagus where the occipital uh, part of the head has been fused pyopagus thoracopagus so these are the few examples of conjoined twins so multiple pregnancy is always considered as a high risk pregnancy because uh, there is high, higher chance or higher incidence of uh, uh, preterm uh, delivery okay so the the, twi uh, the twins can be delivered uh, before the term and also they have the the there is higher incidence of uh, babies of uh, baby babies delivered with low birth weight okay and uh, sometimes uh, during early trimester there is a condition called as vanishing twin so one of the uh, baby uh, might disappear uh, so this usually uh, occurs in the early trimester or sometimes there can be uh, compromise in the blood flow from the placenta so one, the one of the twin can have the uh, more blood from the placenta and the other uh, other twin baby uh, can be compromised with the blood flow so this can lead, uh, lead to uh, uh, the baby uh, with the compromised blood flow can have lower birth weight and uh, slow in the growth rate okay so uh, these are this is about the multiple pregnancy uh, some of the other clinical correlates uh, related to amniotic fluid uh, so amniotic fluid is uh, the fluid which is present in the amniotic cavity and it is very important for the development of the embryo and the fetus so the uh, condition the clinical aspect related to amniotic fluid is the polyhydromnios or hydromnios which is very common and the other one is oligohydromnios so in polyhydromnios there will be increase in the amount of uh, amniotic fluid which is which will be around uh, 1500 to 2000 ml so the causes can be idiopathic or sometimes uh, it can be due to if the mother is suffering from uh, diabetes okay gestational diabetes or sometimes uh, the maybe due to congenital anomalies like if the baby is having some central nervous system defect especially uh, anencephaly in a condition anencephaly the uh, the polyhydromnias are very common and also in condition like uh, atresia okay uh, esophageal atresia so the 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 baby the embryo uh, or the fetus has difficulty in um, swallowing the amniotic fluid so in these condition uh, the mother can present with polyhydromnios or also called as hydromnios uh, oligohydromnios is a rare but it can usually uh, occur due to renal agenesis or um, uh, uh, especially when there is a, a problem with the renal development so in this condition there is no uh, a sufficient amount of uh, amniotic fluid within the amniotic cavity that might um, constrain the uh, fetus and uh, usually the fetus might uh, have club foot and uh, there is no enough amount of amniotic fluid uh, which can go to the lungs uh, because for the development of the lungs uh, amniotic fluid is very much necessary and the baby can have lung hypoplasia okay so these are some of the uh, uh, conditions uh, related to uh, amniotic uh, fluid and uh, there are uh, conditions uh, related to umbilical cord abnormal abnormalities so during birth the umbilical cord is around 1 to 2 cm in diameter and 50 to 60 cm in uh, length uh, some uh, fetus can have a short umbilical cord so this might affect the intrauterine movement of the fetus so usually the length of the umbilical cord is reflected with the intrauterine movement of the fetus 
uh, or sometimes if the umbilical cord is very uh, lengthy it can uh, uh, go around the neck of the fetus and uh, it can be risky while deliver delivering the baby okay so these are some of the clinical aspects uh, related to amniotic fluid and the umbilical cord so that completes uh, the development of placenta and also i have covered the concepts of uh, multiple uh, pregnancy thank you for watching